Okay, we are picking it up here. Here's what we have. We want to go ahead and change the color of the layer that those things are on, which is East Surface. In other words, I put lines at a thousand, and we want to change the color of that layer. Getting used to doing things like using the minus layer command, or in fact saying layer here, we're going to change the color of that surface layer. You can see how difficult it might be here and how easy it would with key in. So we're going to change that color, which is set by the DOT as cyan, but we're really not that concerned. We're going to make that green. And we're going to hit a X here. And we're going to draw one more line, short line here, line from the dot X, Y. I'm sorry, introduce you to the tool. Line, shift, right click, point filters, dot X, Y of that an elevation of 1100 to the dot x y of this point elevation of 1150 right now what we have is four th five three-dimensional lines which we can use as break lines I'm not going to go through and do the points how you would go about doing the points would be to go through and make points, make point groups, etc., etc. We'll be concentrating on learning how to pull in uh, data shortcuts once we get that figured out on the network uh, to bring in our uh, tins or surfaces, as the case would be. So we've got kind of what we would call an existing surface here now. You've started, you've started your drawing correctly. Now you're going to go down to basically kind of tough to remember you have to actually go to make a surface before you can actually define a surface so we're going to right click here we're going to create a surface we're going to get the habit of actually EXTOPO I'm sorry putting bogus B-O-G-U-S dash and I'll put EXTOPO XTOPO is one of the names that the DOT tends to use for the existing topography. So we're going to hit OK. We've got a surface defined and now we need to, I'm sorry, the first surface created, now we need to define it. We're going to define it, you remember, by having for sure some sort of information, perhaps some boundary information, some break lines, some percent, perhaps drawing objects, etc., etc. Uh, very often point files and point groups, but in this case we're going to guess go ahead and we'll try the drawing objects one. Let's try some drawing objects. Right click, add. We're going to add lines, sure. Bogus, tin. All kinds of different ways to make a tin. We're now going to select our objects. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to remember, of course, not to grab these lines which were part of the cadastral map down at zero elevation. Hit a return there. We now have some lines made. We're hoping that, in fact, we know we can go here and create a surface. I'm sorry, cancel. Uh, we're hoping that when we go ahead and make those lines, it, in fact, all right, created things, and it doesn't look like it necessarily did. So we're going to see now whether our, right, if we click on that, you notice here when I click on it, it actually did make the surface. That's our check. We select what we have here, and it changes the toolbar across here. Now, to make sure that things work correctly, there'll be lots of different ways, but we're going to learn to go here and surface properties surface properties and change just the style if you would we're going to change the style to be contours and there you see it kind of an odd looking tin but it's a tin nonetheless you want to finally remember that you do not want to have that kind of information out on your screen on a regular basis so you go back here change your surface properties to no display or to just boundary but I'm going to turn on no display hit apply okay now we have our tin there realistically soon you really don't want these X topo lines around you've got the cadastral map around so we can go now remember to go to layer and this is the point where you're going to start to have to put together some of your AutoCAD skills that you may or may not have acquired and 
I like to use not necessarily filters but property layer manager so I'm gonna go ahead and make a a layer manager you see they've got a couple already made but I'm gonna make a new one and I'm gonna give it September 24th give it a name you're gonna see all kinds of different settings for this but I'm just gonna hit close here I set that up now if I go in and decide you know what I'd like to turn existing surface off and start designing on proposed alignment P underscore alignment I'm gonna more or less be able to turn off that layer and we'll see how in a little bit you can turn off that layer not when it's current we can go to uh, we hope alignment there P alignment maybe your base alignment set that as your current layer click off and now you can do things like selecting layer off layer freeze or minus layer freeze and you could in this case do E star it's gonna turn everything off and which we don't want minus layer thaw E dash or D underscore map star and I've got that general frame around what I have they'll usually be more than that but learning to use layer styles layer manager maybe this is something knowing that you're on this current layer if you draft a line now line from here to here it should go on the layer I'm listing list or li la for last it lists it on proposed alignment the base alignment so you start using layers you might want to remember this layer state so you might say up at the layer manager you might want to go back to la for layer or layer manager and make a new layer state and call this one new design dash alignment so using layer states is going to be a huge skill as you get into more complex uh, environments. And you'll roll this all of a sudden clicking in the habit. We're going to start clicking things off until we know what they are, but we're going to sit close. Current layer save. I'm going to save this now. We save that layer state. Sure. Close. We now are kind of where we want to be. We have a tin. Even though it's not on, we know what's underneath. We're going to now just basically I'll draft a line using some sort of basic skills. I'm going to go a line from here perpendicular to that line. Remember that being at zero elevation. I'm going to offset T for through from here through the midpoint. And I'm going to also out of habit realize that I drafted this line from here to there. To get used to using grip edits I can left click left click spacebar spacebar rotate 180 small things like that may pay off in the future I'll go ahead and go ahead and just take my road and connect it up to the other midpoint so I'm gonna go align from the mid of here right and now I can go to the mid of that and hopefully they're correct right I can now say fillet radius 0 or fillet radius 300 or fillet radius 500. Click here and here and I have put together now essentially an alignment that if I edit going this way it will start going this way and if I edit that way it will start going that way. So now you're going to go to P edit select your polyline yes J for join select 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 you now have a polyline that goes in that direction running at a time the next thing you're gonna do is to make an alignment 